Hello and welcome to the Gold and Below Winners Finals uh, of the Gold and Below number 5. I'm here today with the ever lovely Arcanine, one of the organizers of this event, and we are here today me. to cast Meat Spin vs. Artanis. So spawning in the bottom right of Ohana, we have the purple Protoss Meat Spin, and in the top left, we have the orange Protoss Artanis. So this is a PvP. Arcanine, how does it feel to be debuting your casting career? Here today well it, it doesn't feel like much of anything surprisingly uh, I do want to say that before the tournament started meat spin was one of the first in the lobby and uh, so I was playing some practice warm-up games with him and he was kept saying that he felt very 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 nervous he didn't think he was very good but he also beat me well or he beat my Terrence so and now he's just been smashing his way through the tournament 2-0 2-0 pretty much so I'm pretty pretty psyched about that. Well, that's great, man. I'm very, very excited to see what he's going to do in this game. Uh, it sounds like his PVT is very good if he, if he was able to beat you. Uh, but we'll have to see what he does in PVP, because PVP is one of the most crazy, ridiculous matchups. And I am very excited to see what his strategy will be, as well as Artanis' strategy. Yeah, same here. So, um... I don't know too much about Protoss. He is there. Can you see? Any, can you read anything into their builds at this point in time, or is it just the usual? It's pretty much just the usual at this point. You usually get your gas up at around this time, and uh, I do apologize for the noises going on in my apartment. My roommate is getting a visit from his family, which is very exciting. But this early on in the game, you don't really see too too much. You're going to get your pile on your gateway, and then your assimilator. You could go like a Forge Fast expand, but not in a PvP, that's very unlikely. And then we usually see the Cyber Core, which we're seeing out of both players at this time. After that um, is when the most variance happens. Whether or not Meat Spin or Artanis will get their second gas is a big indicator of what's to come. Uh, and then how many gateways they throw down, or whether they start saving up for a Nexus. These are, uh, these are the sort of things we can look for in a PvP uh, in determining what the two players are going to do. And of course, there's the golden rule, whoever expands first loses. <laughs> yeah, that can happen sometimes. Uh, of course, if it's left unchecked, <laughs> then you're kind of at an economic disadvantage. So you really want to make sure you're scouting around. So I love this play by uh, Meat Spinner and Artana sending their probes around so that you know they can, say, they can safely see each other's base and see what kind of things are going on. And here's exactly what I was talking about. Both players are getting their second gas. So it's very likely that we'll see uh, a robotics facility coming out for either of our players. Um, and as soon as I say that, Artanis puts down a gateway. But I imagine they'll be going for some sort of tech. We might even see Stargate play. And then one thing to note is that Meat Spin does not seem to be producing units out of his gateway. At all. No. Uh, in fact, this early on in the game, you really, you really kind of want to be cautious with your unit production because... If you build units, that's going to be a good thing. You can defend yourself, you can put on some pressure, but if you build too many units, they're just going to kind of sit at your ramp and do nothing, where you could build more probes, you could build more infrastructure, you could get more tech up, more upgrades. So they're both being very cautious, just kind of mixing in some sentries, mixing in some zealots. Uh, Meat's been not making anything at all. He's very confident in what he is doing. And we do see this robotics facility coming down. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Colossus play in this game, to be honest. Neither would I. Yeah. At least from one of them. I'm hoping to see some sort of Stargate, but nope, there's a robotics from Artanis, so it's going to be robo-focused. Yeah. Unless they switch, which is unlikely. Yeah. Both players actually doing pretty much the exact same build. It looks like Meat Spin's going to be popping out an Immortal. This might be where the first variance comes. Artanis might opt to get a, an Observer tends to be more favorable, especially with the looming uh, threat of Dark Templar in the PvP matchup. So I'll be very interested to see what Artanis does once that robotics facility finishes, and it's just now about to finish, and I imagine, oh no, he's actually going for an Immortal as well, so both players playing pretty much the exact same game at this time. So I'm wondering if... Uh... Meat Spin was going to use these troops to expand behind this and defend it, or if he is going to try and attack, because I don't think an attack would go that well for him right now. Yeah. Considering... Go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. 
considering he hasn't been making many units at all. Right. Usually when you're uh, going in for attack, you kind of want to build up some units, and then you want to move out, get some map presence, and then make sure you put down that forward pylon. But we do see this Twilight Council coming down, and generally when you have tech, uh, tech coming about, you don't really want to be pushing because your army is going to be a little bit weaker as that tech is, is you know, researching or, you know, you're waiting for that, uh, that next structure. So I suspect... And this, there's the Nexus. Yeah, the Nexus does indeed go down, so very great call by yourself, uh, Arcanine. And but we do have an attack moving out from Artanis, so this could be a problem. He only has, really, the sentries are what are going to save him in this engagement, upcoming engagement here. Yeah, he's going to really need to put down a force field. I like that he's warping in some more zealots uh, into the mix. He also has an observer, which is going to be very good if he can deny the other player vision by killing uh, Artanis' observer. That's going to be very, very effective. And in fact... Oh, but the observer's moving straight into his army. Yep, he's going to uh, And he pulls it back. Uh, and he cancels the Nexus. Great play by Meatspin. He really needs to make sure he's going to be okay. He needs to chrono boost out another immortal and warp in some more stalkers, I'd say, and then force field this ramp. So here comes the army at this time. Is he going to force field in time? Uh, looks like both players bouncing back Gets and the forth. observer. Yes, he does indeed get the observer, and Artanis is just going to run home. Uh, kind of a smart play, and he did manage to knock 100 minerals off of Meatspin by forcing him to cancel that nexus. That is true. At the cost of an observer, I'd say that's worth it. Oh, yeah. uh, but I think one of the big reasons that attack had to stop was because he didn't have a proxy pylon. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So... You really want to probe with your army so that you can place down place down that pylon and continually reinforce. Um, and, uh, you know, now Meatspin's just going to take his base, but if we see here, um, Artanis is yeah, just a little like bit Artanis ahead. Yeah, it looks like Artanis is next. Yeah, just a little bit ahead. Yeah, which is going to be very, very good for him. Um, he did lose an Observer, which uh, is a little bit annoying. He doesn't know what's going on at this time. Um, for all he knows, Meatspin could have just chucked the Nexus idea out, put down like three more gateways, and just did like an all-in. But that's not the case, of course. I would like to see Meatspin separate his two observers and send one into Artanis' base to see what's going on, uh, just to confirm that everything's okay. And wow, look, here's a huge difference for both players. Artanis getting a second robotics facility, while Meatspin is opting to get a... Uh, uh, Stargate. Stargate. He also has Templar Archives. I'm very skeptical about that. I don't know what... High Templar don't seem that good in Protoss versus Protoss. No, what you... Neither do Archons, not so much. But it seems like he's spreading himself out on text so much, he's going to have a problem where he'll have a little bit of everything, but just get crushed by the Mass Colossus or whatever it may be from Artanis. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love the fact that he's getting up uh, a second robotics facility so that he can pump on Immortals. Immortals are going to be so strong against uh, like a Stalker Archon army or a Zealot Archon. Zealot Archon is going to be a little bit stronger against the Immortal. But... Um, I don't know. Like you said, Meatspin's army is so mixed, max, mixed, match. Oh though. wow! Meatspin has forty-two probes to Artanis' twenty-eight. Whoa! Whoa! You're right. That's absolutely terrible by Artanis. Artanis needs to be getting his probe comp uh, probe count up, or else he's going to be in a. World yeah, he has hurt. no produ probe production right now. Yeah, and that's one of the things that can hurt you the most in the gold leagues and below. And that's one of the great things about this tournament is that. After they're done, they can watch these games, they can watch these casts if they like, and, you know, hopefully get a little bit of insight into what they're doing that's good and what they're doing that's a little bit not so good, and they can use that to kind of make themselves improve. So hopefully we'll see some pro production start up. Meatspin is going to be pulling back to his base, and he's going to get, be getting up Archons, just like we said. And we now have the Twilight Council and a Forge on the way for Artanis, so he'll finally start getting the upgrades. I don't think Meatspin has a Forge yet. It's No, he has a Fleet Beacon, though. Oh, there it is. Never mind. He does. Yeah. He's getting shields first. That's interesting. I kind of like that, seeing as he has such a diversity of units. It's an upgrade that applies to everything. Yeah, it really does. And the other thing is Archons really benefit from the shield uh, upgrade. So if he decides to get more Archons into the mix, that's going to be really, really effective. Um, However, it's just such an odd composition, you know, he has this fleet beacon going down for what I assume will be either carriers or mothership, uh, and he's going to be getting three. Oh, I'd love to see carriers. Yeah, I would love to see carriers. I'd love to see a mothership and a great vortex. He could, like, Archon toilet a Protoss army. It wouldn't really be that effective, but... Um, <laughs> 
but it would be yeah, awesome. It would be awesome. It would be very odd. And we can see Artanis is going back into pro production, which is very nice. He's also getting his zealot legs. So it looks like more like a uh, zealot immortal mix, maybe. Oh, and there's the first carrier about um, approaching halfway done. Now, is he getting the air upgrades? He's getting the... Uh, What's it called? Gravity yeah. Sling? Graviton, yeah, catapult. Graviton Catapult? But is he researching an air attack upgrade? No, it looks like he is no, not. Not at this time. Um, he really could. He's floating quite a bit of minerals, so he can afford to do that if he so chooses. However, I, I don't know. Maybe he needs to be getting up an army. I think going for the bigger army would be a better choice in this, uh, in this situation, because the air upgrades are really going to help his carriers and his Void Ray and the bulk of his army is going to be on the ground for a long, long time. So, I would love to see a bigger army out of him, and I'd love to see both players kind of scout around and see what's going on. Um, Artanis has no idea that Ar uh, that Meatspin has taken this third, and uh, Meatspin has no idea that Artanis doesn't have a third. No, Artanis actually has vision of the third. He hasn't seen the natural, ironically enough, but he has th seen oh, really? the third. Oh, you're absolutely right. Let's uh, and now he's going to be taking his own, which is a great move by him. I'd also see him, I'd love to see him push out. Try to poke, prod, try to deny that third as best he can. He did such a great job with kind of poking at the natural. And I think he got a little too scared and pulled back home, which was alright, but it shouldn't crush his confidence. He really should go back out onto the map and try to do some damage if he can. Yeah. Especially if he has the faster units, which he doesn't know because he hasn't seen his opponent's army. That's one of the, I think, the most important thing is to keep tabs on your opponent's Absolutely. army. Absolutely. Even just feigning engagements, just to see what he has. Yeah. And see if he's scared of you or not. Absolutely. That's one of the best things you can do um, as a StarCraft II player. And I, I'm really interested to see how this composition is going to work. You know, this is one of those compositions that's like, wow, this actually looks really strong and really cool. In reality, in practicality, the pros would, you know, would be able to crush something like this because they would just... Yeah, it's like going Roach, Hydra, Muta, Corruptor, Broodlord, Ultralisk. It just yeah, doesn't it, work. It's not very practical. You really want to, like, have a really strong strength that will hit your opponent's really weak weakness sort of deal rather than just kind of having a general thing and then just getting crushed by simple numbers. You know... Both players really should be maxed at this time. Both of them are floating a lot of minerals. But you know what? This is the kind of thing you yeah. have to do. You have to experiment with unit compositions, and, and this is exactly what we see these players are doing. And Artanis has a, a fairly good unit composition. I'd like to see a few more sentries. But uh, the fact that he's going heavy zealot means that he doesn't really need those sentries because they'll kind of block it. But the stalkers kind of do need it. I don't know. It's kind of a weird mix. But I love these Immortals. I'd like to see more of them. I think they can be very effective against what um, against what Meat Spin has. Is he kind of has just a general, you know, just kind of clump yeah. of stuff. I, I, immortals are pretty good at just kind of tanking uh, ground units, with the exception of the Zealots, of course. Yeah, and uh, then also they actually take just as much damage from a sentry as they do. Their hardened shield does not apply to that. So sentries don't do much damage, but they do as much damage as they do versus immortals as they do it versus anything yeah, else. And that's not like very super good or anything. Oh, and I love this. Getting some Colossi no. out. Colossi are going to be really good against the Zealots, which are the thing I was kind of worried about. So now if he just gets a, some more stalkers up, he should be able to deal with this carrier force. But he's not going to know that unless he moves across the map and, and finds out what his opponent is doing. And so I'm very, very afraid for Artanis as far as uh, the carriers go because he does not have that much anti-air as he continues to warp his uh, zealots. Oh, wow. If I'm just looking at some of the statistics. And the interceptors with the plus one attack, they do six damage per yeah. shot. And Guardian Shield reduces that by two for every shot of the Interceptor, so that really reduces it, the damage from those yeah. carriers. A surprising amount. On the other hand, though, their attack is so, so quick. They have one of the highest DPSs, and it looks like Artanis finally moving across the map is going to run into a wall of cannons. Luckily, he does have Colossi to deal with that, but now Meatspin coming up from the side with his Archon Carrier, Zealot, Stalker, High Templar, Immortal Force, and pushing forward. It looks like a lot of damage being done to Artanis as these carriers are just absolutely crushing everything. He's morphing some more Archons in the battle. But look at this. Artanis is pushing forward and the only thing really left for... Uh, oh, actually, never mind. All the stalkers die immediately. 
He has no anti-air. Yeah. There it is, Stalker's in the back. He can blink under and kill snipe these carriers. Or he's gonna, it looks yeah, like he's gonna counterattack. Yeah, he doesn't counter actually attack. have blink, so he's gonna counterattack. Um, but, it, you know, it's only six Stalkers. That's not gonna be a very strong counterattack. Ooh, this carrier might get caught a little bit off guard, so he's gonna have to pull back. It's getting a little weaker. Uh, but he's coming in with his Archon On the other hand, he is pulling... Oh, sorry. On the other hand, he is pulling the entire army meat spin back all yep. the way back to his main so that's really far from being able to do damage to our tanks so there's i think it was a good move to oh, counterattack yeah. there absolutely great move it definitely kept him alive however i'm really really worried uh this colossi did go down i'm worried about what Artanis is going to do he's not reinforcing he's not building anything out of these robotics facilities um he's getting some stalkers which is good but he really needs more i love that he's getting blink i think that's a fantastic decision on his part and oh, no, I thought he had he one. Uh, but he is upgrading it now. He was going for more of a zealot heavy force, and then when he saw those coloss uh, those carriers, excuse me, he realized that zealots are not going to be too too good against that, especially with these with these archons here. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what Artanis can do from this point, as he's kind of playing from behind. He's stuck on three base while his opponent is up on four. Could easily take a fifth if he wanted to, and. Uh, yeah, it's also 75 yeah. food down, oh, yeah. approximately. There's his fourth. I don't think he can hold that, though. Looks like Meat Spin's heading straight for the third. But if he fall, if he runs into the army and then falls back to the fourth, that would be a yeah, really good play. Yeah, he'd be able play. to crush it. Oh. See the Stalker army trying to take out these debris. Uh, and the Archon's moving in at this time. The Stalker's doing damage, but... Oh, the no. DPS oh. of the, the carriers... Now, the uh, Arcanist does have an upgrade lead. That's really his edge in this game. But I don't think it's really going to matter that much. He needs more warp dates. Yeah, absolutely. But he also needs more money, so... does he, how's it, How is his pro count? 60, it's 60 to 93, yeah, and there's the GG. Uh, great play by Meatspin, honestly. Uh, going for those carriers actually worked really well in his advantage. So anyway, uh, we are live streaming this, but I am also going to be frapsing it. Well, I just fraps it, and it's going to go on my YouTube channel as well. So I'd like to thank Arcanine for casting this with me. I'd have a lot. I had a lot of fun with it, and we'll be casting the next two games together. So if you enjoyed that, please check out my videos, and uh, you can check them out at YouTube.com/user/KnowingStudios. Uh, please comment on the video, do all that sort of thing, and thanks again, Arcanine. Uh, no problem. Yep. That was guys. fun.